Hey everyone and welcome to your yin practice. Today you're going to need two yoga blocks and if you don't have yoga blocks, anything that is similar, so books, boxes, and if it is something that, um, these are quite a firm foam sort of material, so perhaps if you've got something that's quite hard to cover it with um, a blanket or a cushion, you will probably need a blanket, you'll probably need a few cushions, and if you do have a bolster or anything similar, you might need that as well. My um, rule of thumb for yin really is to get more than you think you need. So if you've got a few blankets, a few cushions, you can make do. I'm going to use these props so that you can see what it's supposed to look like, and then if you don't have them, you can work with what you've got at home. Come to lie down on your back to begin. Closing your eyes to start. Let's take a few deep breaths. Bring your hands onto your heart space, perhaps one hand on top of the other. And just continue these deep breaths into the front, the sides and the back of the lungs. Today's class is going to work around the heart chakra, Anahata chakra. Whether or not we believe that it is a physical entity in our bodies, whether or not we believe that it lies beneath where your hands are right now. Anahata chakra is all about love and devotion to yourself, to others. And we've all experienced love in some way or another. As we move through this practice today, see if you can approach it from a place of love. If you find your mind wandering away, bring it back to the topic. Love, devotion. Maybe take a moment to contemplate what it means to you, if you find it easy to love, if you find it difficult. And hopefully these poses today will have a little bit of an impact on how we feel. Moving into our first pose, we're going to move slowly. You can keep the eyes closed if you can. We're coming to a supine half moon. Wiggle both your feet to the bottom right corner of your mat and then lift the arms up to the top right corner of your mat. If your arms overhead is too much, just bring them by the sides. So imagine you're creating a banana shape through your body or a half moon or crescent moon shape. If you need to wiggle your hips to the left, then do, but keep both glutes firmly on the floor. Holding it here for three minutes. So you can stay lying as you are. I'm going to be timing each of our poses today.
As you settle here into the posture, if you want to, you can always cross left leg over right. If you want to, you can take hold of left wrist with right hand. Or you can ignore that. We don't need to ever go deeper or further in yin yoga. All we're ever doing is finding a place that suits us today. And then committing to being still. Notice when your mind leaves and it wanders away. See if you can kindly bring it back into this practice, into this moment. Starting now to think about moving and just take any small movements, wiggles that you maybe want to take, bringing your body back into the centre. Either take a moment to lie still, to wiggle around in your body, or just move straight into our second side. So in your own time, the hips can stay where they are, the upper body can creep over to the left, the feet can creep over to the bottom left, and the arms come up overhead to the left if that feels all right through the shoulders, if it doesn't have them down by the sides. And again, remember the purpose of yin is never to keep going deeper and deeper, that's not the point at all. It's always just to be okay with where we are. Committing to stillness and breathing now into the right side of your body. Feel like your chest is open.
starts to think about moving. And then start to move, however you want to. Come back into the centre. And just lie for a moment or wiggle through your body. Our next pose is a supported bridge pose. So I'm going to be using a block for this pose. If you've got something similar, then amazing. We'd like this prop to be firm enough, but also just soft enough that it doesn't hurt your skin. So the block will be either on its smallest height or the height above. Remember, this doesn't mean it's any better being higher up. It's not the point at all. It's whichever one feels more comforting, feels like you can be still, feels safe. And we're going to take it to the place that is right at the bottom of your back. It's really just at the top of your bum crack, to be honest, and it's the sacrum. And it's that kind of fused bone part that's at the bottom of all the vertebra that you can feel. So if you're unsure, you can always have a little feel around in your lower back. You can feel the bumps of the vertebra. And when you get low enough, you feel like there's a flatter part. And that's where we're taking the block. Please, please, please don't do this one. This is just, no, <laughs> way too much. So we're going to keep it nice and low. And really what you want to feel here is that your hips are very heavy onto the block. So if your bum is touching the floor, then you've got your block too high up your back. The bum will not touch the floor, it will be lifted. And settle into your supported bridge. Feet are probably around about hip distance apart. Hands can rest on the stomach, on the floor, however you want. You can even have a blanket over you. Join all of these poses if you want. And then we're here for a little bit longer, so settle in. When you feel like you are ready to commit to the stillness, then do. And if there's any tiny adjustments, please take them. And then even though we're going to hold this pose for a little bit longer, you can come out of this pose at any time at all. It, again, doesn't impact your yin practice at all. Progress in yin is not about how long we can stay. It's not about how deep we can go.
Notice your mind wandering away and bring it back. See if you can treat this pose with love, devotion. If you can treat your body and your mind here with love and devotion. Start to think about moving. Maybe some deeper breaths. And then to move off your block, you're going to push hard into the heels to lift. Maybe just a tiny little bit. Slide the block out. And then lower section by section of the spine. And then again, it's completely up to you if you want to move or stay still. It's very different person to person. So you might just be able to turn over onto your stomach with your head at this end of the mat, or you might want to turn it to the other side. We're going to be coming into a sphinx pose. So bringing yourself up if you need to, or just turning yourself around. I'm going to show you two options for your sphinx pose today. So we're going to come to lie on the belly. Elbows sort of underneath your shoulders and head can rest on something. Cushions, a block, but it shouldn't be too low. So if we go too low, then the shoulders collapse, the upper back collapses. Instead, we should still have the shoulders feeling like they're up above the elbows. And as you tip your head forward, it is just the head. So notice how my upper back, my shoulders, they're not going to change. It's just the head. This is one option. Another option is to use some cushions or a bolster. Bring it underneath the chest. Elbows to the floor, hands down, either just like this or perhaps using the block as well, up to you. Take about 30 seconds or so to find a space, a version of this pose that works. If you feel too uncomfortable, tweak it a little bit, add some props, take some away. As long as this shape is here and you know that you can come out of it at any time, then you're fine. If you feel any pain, of course, in any yin pose, then do come out. There might be a little bit of uncomfort as we go, but it shouldn't be any pain. Well, let's settle in here.
start to think about moving. And then just take your time. Just take 30 seconds to move or to be still. And take this rebound time in between the poses to just do anything you need to do to sit or to lie down or to be still or to move. And then our next pose, you might need a blanket if the floor is a little bit uncomfortable for you. And we're going to be coming into broken wing or unwinding pose. So we're going to take the right arm out to the side, lying on the belly. Right arm straight out in line with the shoulder along the floor so it's not higher or lower. Use your left hand to push the floor away, roll onto the side of your body, onto the right side. And then the left leg can just come behind you. You know, if you want to, you can always wedge a couple of cushions onto this um, left leg. I'll try to show you with my bolster. You can wedge some cushions here, or you can just do without. It's up to you. Left arm can be in front of you, or it can just fall behind your back. Again, personal preference, whichever one you prefer. If your head is failing to touch the floor, just bring a block underneath your head or a cushion. And let's just hold it here. So make any adjustments that work for you.
Okay. Start to think about moving from here. And if you can keep the eyes closed, do and just move yourself out of the pose, taking it really slow. <sighs> do what you need to do. Any movements at all, any stillness. And then when you're ready, we're going to set this up on the second side. So we're going to come down to lie on the stomach. This time you'll need the space to take your left arm out to the side. And use your right hand to push the floor. Right leg can come behind you. Adjust anything that is uncomfortable. Use blankets, use props. And if you want a block or a cushion under the head, then you can. Let's start our timer and settle in. And it's okay if you have a slightly different pose to me. As long as you find that it feels supported, it shouldn't really feel like 100% of a stretch or even 90 or even 80. Just about 50, 60%, quite a lazy version of the pose. We're really opening here through the chest. Especially if you take the right arm just behind you. Let's get to a point where we feel like we can be still. Starting to think about moving. And then starting to move slowly. We're going to be lying on our backs next, but you can take a moment to do anything that you need to do first. You may wish to have a blanket. We're going to be coming into a supported fish pose next. 
So I'm going to have two blocks for this. You can do a similar situation. One is going to be for my head. One is going to be about where my shoulder blades are. Takes a little bit of fiddling about to figure out the right places to take them. And if you're starting to feel a bit cool, that's a normal part of this practice. You can just cover yourself with a blanket. Find the first block on your shoulder blades, just below the shoulder blades, wherever it feels best. And then the head is supported. Really important that the head is supported here. You might need to fiddle about to find the best place here. And then arms can just rest down by the side. We put our timer on. And again, even though I'm timing each pose, it doesn't truly matter if you want to finish the pose at any time you can. So in this supported fish pose, we really do now feel like we're opening up the heart space and the chest. See if this feels lovely to you or if it feels a little bit vulnerable or uncomfortable. See if you can feel like you are completely enveloped in love. that you are loved, that you have love to give, that you have self-love, that you have devotion, compassion, So you can choose to stay like this if you want to. 
more really, really slowly. Just roll on, roll to one side, taking your time to come off your blocks, your cushions. Just move them out of your way. And then bring yourself into Shavasana, come to lie down on your back. Maybe getting under a blanket, just getting however comfortable you can. And then just being still. Each pose that we've taken part in today is supposed to help to balance the heart chakra, Anahata chakra. We're not supposed to love too freely or too much. We're not supposed to struggle to love either. We're always seeking some kind of balance, some kind of middle ground. I need for a moment now, see if you can reflect on how you feel about love, compassion, devotion, how you love your family, friends, partner, how you love yourself. So you can stay in Shavasana now for as long as you want. Maybe just take a moment to pause this video so that you're not interrupted and just settle into a Shavasana that can last for as long as you have. Otherwise, take your time to come up in your own time, really slow, any stretches along the way. And if you're choosing to end your practice now, just take one more deep breath. Bring your hands to prayer at your heart centre. Namaste.